Hey, what up, potheads? It's me, your girl, Christina. During our break between Goblet of Fire and the prisoner, nope, Order of the Phoenix, uh, let's just call them a four and five. Can't fuck that up. In between four and five, we're taking a little break. You know, we're doing the every other week situation, showing you some bonus episodes, showing you some some pay- previously paywalled bonus episodes, all kinds of bonus shit. So here's a little bonus for you, a little bonus for me too. For those who haven't heard, uh, I don't know how you couldn't have how you could have not heard <laughs> if you listen to this very podcast. But recently, my colleagues and I started a company called Wildling Press. It's a publishing house, an independent publishing house, where we uplift marginalized voices and yada 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 <laughs> book stuff. Accordingly, we are also starting a podcast. Wildling Press's podcast is called "How Do I Book." And in this podcast, we seek to answer that question. Um, it sounds like a pretty vague question, but uh, people do ask, how do I make a book? How do I start a book? How do I publish a book? So we're trying to kind of just answer all of the questions about books. We'll be talking about both subjects for writers, um, authors who are actively publishing, um, and and readers as well. So there's a lot of cool content over there for book lovers. It's not explicit. Not on the Movie Night Crew Network, but still still fun. <laughs> a little bit of a different tone for me. Um, no swearing allowed, so it's taking some practice. But I'm really excited about it. We recorded this episode for How Do I Book, but in retrospect, we decided that we really shouldn't release it to that no- network for obvious reasons. Um, you know, we've done a lot of work here on the restricted section to sort of contextualize Harry Potter and its themes and its author's behavior. Um, we haven't done that work over on the Wildling How Do I Book feed, so we're not really comfortable talking about this kind of content over there, especially since we're trying to appeal to queer authors um, and other marginalized groups. But we really felt like this episode was better suited for y'all who understand. So please enjoy our presentation, <laughs> making it sound like way more dramatic than it is, of the four founders. How do I book? wild thing welcome to how do i book by wildling press we like to chat about book writing book publishing book marketing and of course book reading we're trying to help new and experienced authors develop their craft widen their perspectives and learn to get a little wild every once in a while i'm grace ball operations manager at wildling and i am joined by my beloved colleague christina hi i'm christina khan i'm wildling's communications director and I am also joined today by my colleague, Michael. Hi, I'm Michael. I am the creative director for Wilding Press, and I'm also joined by my colleague, Mary Payton. Hey, guys, I'm Mary Crook. I'm the public relations director at Wilding Press. So today we're here to talk about the four founders, a.k.a. us. But if you like books and have read some of the more famous books, books that have come out in the last couple decades, you might know another Four Founders. That's right, the Four Founders of Hogwarts and Harry Potter. Before we go any further, we know. We know. We don't like it either, okay? The whole person who wrote this book series issue has been, um, you know, plaguing the fandom for many moons now. You know, not not to toot my own horn, but I, I personally host a separate podcast that is rated explicit for adults only called The Restricted Section, where we explored this subject, the death of the author and what to do when a beloved celebrity sort of acts out. And I'm going to link that in the show notes. But just to reemphasize, please note that that is an adults only podcast. But I do think it's a really good episode that kind of explores this issue. But that being said... We've all made this choice to take the fandom and not the author. It's our fandom now, okay? (laughs) Yeah, we're taking it back. (laughs) Yeah. There's another reason why we just really relate to the Hogwarts Four Founders. Mary Payton, do you want to kind of explain why that is? I would love to. It's because through some sort of magic, each one of us at Wildling belongs to 
each of the different houses at Hogwarts. Incredible. And we're all just waiting for, spoiler alert, for Mary Peyton to get fed up with our antics, <laughs> uh, make a secret chamber in the school with a monster in it, and then leave us forever. Who <laughs> says I have not already started doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling unsafe. <laughs> Oh my God, Grace, it's behind you. <laughs> I would never. I'm here to break the stereotypes of Slytherins. <laughs> That's the thing is that each of these houses is obviously just chock full of stereotypes. And I think that yes. while we do like fulfill some of those characteristics, I, I think we are all, you know, developed people and um, we've got layers as do people in these houses, you know, like. Are you saying we're divergent? Wow. I think that I am. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't really love that series, but that's okay. That's a, okay. Well, we'll, we'll, <laughs> all right, all right, we will all right. surely discuss the Divergent book series in another episode. Mm-hmm. I have so many things to say about that. But for the time being, um, that's a great point, Grace. We all are a lot of things. Um, I think you could make an argument for every person to be in every house mm-hmm. just about. But we do just kind of want to talk about it because we think it's really interesting. Yeah, so, like one day when we discovered that like, I don't know. It just like dawned on us that each of us belong to a different house. In a in the group chat. Yeah. We were just like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's something that didn't matter at all until we realized it was perfect and now it's everything. Well, and that's the other thing is that we became founders in our own right. And so then we were like, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> It's incredible. We're incredible. We're, tr- we're truly. Basically. Is that what this podcast is about now? Just I'm how pretty sure. Is. Is that what it is? If that's your main takeaway from this episode, we have succeeded. <laughs> so let's start first with the Gryffindor like Harry Potter always does. Start with the Gryffindor. <laughs> Classic Gryffindor. (laughs) Classic Gryffindor. And I like many Gryffindors, particularly the Weasleys. I am a ginger, so I feel like that is my most biggest and largest Gryffindor trait. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Must be a Weasley. (laughs) And I gotta say, uh, I always kind of laugh when I see the traits of a Gryffindor because they always say they're courageous, chivalrous, and they have determination. And I will stand, stand behind and say I do have determination you know, I always, you know, follow through and fight for what I want. I will claim chivalry. I have a dad who is uh, has those like really Southern gentleman roots that he has instilled in me. But uh, as far as the courageousness goes, I feel like I'm more of a Ron. <laughs> because not only because I really love sweets, but also because, you know, I do really like get really nervous before I have to do something large. Uh, you know, I don't just jump right up forward with my you know chest out. You know, I always have to be like, pushed a little bit by the nearest Hermione or actually in this case, the nearest Ravenclaw. (laughs) But yeah, you know, but I would say that before I went through and took any of the tests to see what your house is, I really thought I was a Ravenclaw. I just knew it. I'm going to be on Ravenclaw for a hundred percent down. And I found out after taking the tests that I am a Gryffindor with Slytherin rising. Mm. So (laughs) nowhere near Ravenclaw. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so speaking of Ravenclaws, wow. Grace. It's me. Hello. Um, yes, okay. I am a Ravenclaw. I think that probably a lot of people listening to this episode right now are Ravenclaws. Maybe I'm wrong. Book projects do tend to attract Ravenclaws. It's I've true. learned that it's throughout true. my days. Yeah, so, you know, I, I have, you know, good company as a Ravenclaw. I've always been really academically motivated. I... I'm always just like curious and and interested in learning new things. I am a list oriented person. Mm-hmm. Uh, I try to be really like level headed and rational when making decisions. And, you know, I think also a lot of Ravenclaws can be slightly more introverted than maybe our Gryffindor friends um, or even a Hufflepuff friend. Um, and so I, I do think that I am naturally more introverted. I man i worked for a long time to be more extroverted so that is a something i'm working on every day um but yeah i you know every test i ever took just said ravenclaw i mean i think that uh i'm sort of hufflepuff cusp um Mm -hmm. i have some some puff tendencies Ravenclaws do make the best work wives i'll just Mm -hmm. give all the listeners that little recommendation right now (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's true 
We're, <laughs> we're pretty great. Um, Christina, tell us about your house. Yeah, so I'm a Hufflepuff. I'm extremely outgoing. I love talking and meeting new people. I love gardening and animals. I pretty much just love friendship. Like, it's the whole point of everything for me is friendship and togetherness. And so I definitely am a Gryffindor rising, but I like to think that I'm the kind of Hufflepuff who it's like my loyalty and my passion for my friends and um, my family that makes me be a Gryffindor in certain moments, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And boisterous does not a Gryffindor make, okay? (laughs) (laughs) Also, I love snack time, so (laughs) I would love to be in that common room right next to the kitchens. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mary Payton, last but night, how could we leave leave you for last like they always do in the books? (laughs) I knew this would happen. I'm so Um. sorry. (laughs) Guys, She's I'm building break, the chamber. I'm going to go ahead speak. and break off uh, from this group and just do my own thing. Wow. We, no. we, we had a good run. eye to eye. It's just never going to oh, work. Oh, God. <laughs> um, no, what I'll do is just storm off, but then I fully expect you guys to come and get me and bring me back and coddle yes. me. Okay. Oh, Which we would such do. Such a Slytherin. I know, right? <laughs> no. Okay. So, yes, I'm a Slytherin. Um, and at first when... I took the test and found that out. I had Slytherin was not even in my mind as being my house. Mm -hmm. Really thought probably Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff because I was, you know, a nerd, a reader, and also love people. But definitely not Gryffindor because that takes a lot of bravery. That's not me. Does it? (laughs) (laughs) But honestly, since I took that test, I really like being a Slytherin. I like the idea of a Slytherin when you separate it from the fact that like the Harry Potter series only really paints one kind of Slytherin but I think the idea is supposed to be that Slytherin is actually a house full of people who could do good um if they chose to and they're just like really mysterious you know maybe a little bit too ambitious maybe a little bit um too cunning for their own good you're just incredibly cool (laughs) is the thing and you get to be unapologetically you (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, sorry. Oh, sorry. Did I push you over? I'm a Slytherin. I just like can't help myself. Sorry. <laughs> She's also a Scorpio. Yeah, also a Scorpio. <laughs> okay, well. But that's so. just a blessing. Let's be real. <laughs> I was about to say that's the trifecta. Um, But that's only two things. And that's why I'm not in Ravenclaw. Also no, born but on the Halloween, other though. that I was just going to say. She's a witch. <gasps> Burn <Burner>. her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gotta go. Um. <laughs> No, but yeah, so I really love it. I love being a Slytherin. We're not all bad, okay? Hard no, hard no. So the cool thing about us, um, you know, sort of embodying these like four different personalities or whatever is it means that we're a pretty good team. Not to toot our horn, but it is. Michael, how would you say that your Gryffindor spirit kind of ties into your design? Like how do you take those things with you into the design world? Um, I would say that for me, you know, I definitely love to try new things as a designer and challenge myself to do different designs to, you know, just really just have something unique about it and have it be loud and have it scream from the shelves the way a Gryffindor demands attention. You know, so I would say that that's probably the, the biggest trait that I take Gryffindor into the design world. I yes, when that. they say don't judge a book by its cover, they're lying. Everyone does. <laughs> Judge that book by its cover. Yeah, I don't know how that ever got to be a thing. I think it ultimately came from not even talking about books. Like that's the thing is it's a metaphor. It's a great mentality for being a human in the world with other humans. Yeah, it's a really bad literal piece of advice because if the cover is really bad, I mean, well, we'll get to it in an episode, I guess, eventually. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It should definitely not be used in marketing, right? (laughs) So, Grace, what about you? How do you think your Ravenclaw attributes contribute to your ability to be such an amazing operations manager and work wife? Yeah, I think that as an operations manager, obviously, I am I do a lot of, I just have like my hands in a lot of different areas. Mm-hmm. And so I think that the fact that I'm, you know, I'm really 
struggling to come up with words right now. Um, okay. Talk about how you're organized. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I already said I was list oriented. You really get at corralling all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just, I think that managing in general, a Ravenclaw mind kind of um, helps with that to just kind of have an order to things, have some rationale in the chaos, kind of generally balance things out. I think that r- the Ravenclaw side of things, that's kind of the job a lot of the time is just to kind of be the balance, sometimes a little bit of a voice of reason when that's necessary. Yeah. So I think that just kind of round, rounding out the group is is how I feel I sort of fit in. <laughs> You're our calm spirit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. You are the rock and we're the river. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Payton, how about you? How do you think that your Slytherin tendencies contribute to um, all that you do as our public relations director? So planning, strategy and planning all the time. That's my favorite thing in the world, whether it's in my personal life, my budget at home, um, but definitely as an editor and um, in public relations. There's always a plan or a strategy to get a book published, to, to figure out how to make it the best book that it can be, and also to get it into the hands of the right readers. So using that kind of Slytherin energy that like, I don't know, we were talking about the other day that no matter what the problem is, there is a way to think it through. I know it's very Ravenclaw too, but I think Slytherins also have that tendency to, like, I guess they would call it plotting in, <laughs> in a more negative sense. I think that it's called resourcefulness. So that's the way that um, I think the books tend to shed a positive light on that aspect of Slytherin House. Absolutely. I, I, I always feel like whatever it is that you want to do, especially in this case as an author, we can figure out a way to do it. Whatever your goal is, whether they're big dreams or small dreams or whatever, there's there's always the perfect way to go about it. Yeah, that's beautiful and poignant. All right, Christina, what about you? How does Hufflepuff energy help you be a great communications director? Well, I'll explain it, even though I feel like it's kind of obvious. Friendship and my interpersonal relationships and, and like truly to me, there's like not much of a difference between a friend and someone you know. I'm the kind of person who I call every single person that I see more than once a year my best friend. All y'all are my best friends. I just hope you know that. If you kind of approach everyone as a friend, it's really easy to talk to them and understand their needs and understand the best way to communicate with them. So that's that's why I am over here directing communications. I think that it's really clear through our social media channels, for example, that we, um, you know, which I manage that. We are really excited to be there and we are really like genuinely excited to be a part of these communities. I think it communicates to when I'm talking to authors um, and to help them get excited about whatever we're doing. I think it communicates when I'm talking to, I just keep saying the word communicates, I guess, to really <laughs> drive how good of a communications. To, I'm directing all these communications everywhere right now. <laughs> That's really why we gave you that title. That's the whole point. <laughs> We said, Christina, what's your favorite word? And you said communicate. (laughs) I love to communicate. In summary, it's like the intrapersonal skills, I think, that have gotten me so far in life and that make it really exciting for me to be here at Wildling because I'm going to, I have so many opportunities to communicate with so many (laughs) awesome colleagues and authors and book people that we haven't even met yet. Christina, can I just say as a completely objective third party? that you are one of the absolute best communicators I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's the anxiety, baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I wish my anxiety like channeled into something so incredibly productive as that. <laughs> That's kind of that. Um, so as you can see, we are the four founders. It was sort of meant to be. And that's how you book. This episode was written by Michael Hardison and edited by Christina Kahn. Logo designed by Michael Hardison and theme music produced by Jason Hilton.
So that has been a sample episode of How Do I Book? I know we didn't really talk about how to book in that episode, but you got a little bit of an idea of who's going to be participating and the kind of stuff we're going to talk about. They're shorter episodes. I hope they're going to be jam-packed with information for writers, readers, all kinds of book lovers. How Do I Book will be releasing every Tuesday wherever you get your podcasts. So please click the link in our show notes to head over to the How Do I Book feed and subscribe so you'll catch the first episodes and all the episodes to come after that. Thank you so much for listening. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.